Siemano koniaro i koniarze. Stop, stop, stop. Ja chciałam Was jeszcze serdecznie zaprosić do serii Suesa, do której macie link w opisie, a ja Wam życzę miłego oglądania. Dzisiaj jesteśmy w czymś bardzo interesującym, czyli w tym pięknym miejscu. Jest to miejsce ratowania koni, tutaj macie pełną nazwę. W ogóle widziałam na ich stronie, że oni też zbierają donacje, więc generalnie będziecie mieli link w opisie. No i dzięki tym wspaniałym ludziom tutaj też prawdopodobnie będę jeździć. I generalnie chciałabym Wam przedstawić tutaj taką bardzo ważną osobę. Jest to Christine. Hello. I ona będzie nas oprowadzać i naprawdę to jest wspaniała osoba i generalnie będziemy mówić po angielsku, więc będą teraz już napisy. You can start say about this beautiful place. Okay, so we are Missouri Forget Me Not Horse Rescue and Sanctuary. The animals we take in are animals that have been abused, neglected, abandoned, or some of them have just been surrendered to us because their owners can no longer take care of them. Some of them have acute illnesses or, or for whatever reason they can no longer be cared for and then those animals come to us. In addition to that, we do animal-assisted therapy and therapeutic riding, which is um, animal-assisted therapy of the horses. And that's beautiful because the horses who've been traumatized and abused by people now recover and mm. help people. The very species that abused them, they are now helping heal. And I think that's amazing and yeah. just incredible. Then we also do lessons, an entire lesson program for, for people and kids. And where horses can be very, very expensive and cost prohibitive to a lot of people, the way we do our lesson program is we don't make them pay anything. They come in and they have to work. They have to come in and clean the stalls. They have to come in and groom the horses. They have to come in and help feed and care for the animals. And in exchange for that, they get riding lessons. And we take them to shows. They have to work. They have to work and learn the value and the um, discipline that goes into caring for the animals. This is our founder's office. Our founder started this. Her name is Connie. She founded this organization 23 years ago and just started doing it personally because there was no one rescuing horses. Dogs and cats, lots of people, no one doing horses. Mm -hmm. So she just out of her own pocket and in her own backyard started mm -hmm. rescuing horses. In 2011, she had a partner named Donna Ogle who just said, I'll help you. And they joined as a partnership and then incorporated and became a not-for-profit 501c3. And then it's just blossomed from there. Mm -hmm. We had a private individual who we call our private angel, our mm -hmm. guardian angel come in and, and find what we were doing incredibly worthy. Spend a year secretly volunteering with us. We had no idea he was considering something big and then he turned around and said you are doing amazing work you need a bigger mm -hmm. place and he gifted us this entire facility so that is this facility this is our boardroom we are board managed and operated so our board helps us decide what we're doing when we're doing it and our board meets weekly so run by a group of four women of which i am one mm -hmm. więc teraz przeszliśmy do mega fajnego i przydatnego miejsca jak widzicie są tu duże okna które pomagają w kontrolowaniu tym co się dzieje na ujeżdżalni poza tym są systemy dźwiękowe z głośnikami i z mikrofonami dzięki którym wszystko słychać co się dzieje również tam na ujeżdżalni przez co ktoś kto przebywa tutaj w tej powiedzmy jadalni może od razu szybko zareagować jeśli ktoś zawoła go o pomoc właśnie z ujeżdżalni wszystko jest tutaj zmaksymalizowane żeby było pod kontrolą <laughs> So men's restroom, women's restroom, everything's set up, so it's yeah. fully. This is my therapy office, and mm -hmm. Joyce does book work here, all the stuff. These are some of my riders. Amazing riders, right? Do you want to so come on out? This is Pilgrim. When Pilgrim got to us four months ago, he was, uh, maybe he's about six months now. This horse right here, he was skin and bones. He, he had been, the people who dropped him off to us admitted to us that he, they had abused him and beat him and starved him to try to control him. And we truly didn't know if he would live. He was so thin. He was in a body, in a state called cachexia, where his body's consuming itself. Oh. So we had to do a lot of work and very slowly in a balanced way. And now he's big and strong and beautiful. This is the horse you are going to ride. Oh, wow. Oh. Wow, so beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, this is a gelding. And he is actually a national champion reigning horse, so oh, you're, you're okay. going to ride a real horse. These are two beautiful mares. She is a very unusually um, rare colored pattern called a yeah. um, snow cap blue roan apple and stuff. Oh, so right? Yes, oh. yes, and it's a very unusual coat pattern mm -hmm. for an apple. This is very typical of what a horse looks like when we get it. This horse has been here four days. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Right 
now, she's skin and bone. Mm -hmm. Look at me, Nina. She has facial paralysis from mm -hmm. illness and injuries. Look at us. We'll get this turned around. She she will recover and look as good as Pilgrim. Yeah, I believe. I believe. But this is very frequently where it starts. <laughs> he is one of my best therapy horses. He's my personal horse. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Food, right? And he, I mean, mm -hmm. he's also saying hi. He's in attention now. But he specializes in children. The smaller the child, the smaller he becomes. And he's a big horse. Hi, food, 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 food. Specialty is um, any individual in wheelchair. Just <laughs> you got a kiss. Looks like you got a kiss. That was not a bite. This is Trey. He's a youngster. He's been adopted. He was an orphan. He's been adopted by just wonderful people, and he gets to go home at the end of this month to his new home and his new family. This is my retired show horse. She's a, an Oldenburg, warm blood, and she's 20 now. Don't tell her. She's in very good shape. Yeah, she's in fabulous shape, and she has no idea she's that old. I got baby. She's the princess here. She's not a rescue. She's my personal retired oh. show horse. Oh, okay. Icy and I competed internationally. You may have been too long. This is Big Bear. This horse is fantastic. If you weren't riding that one, you would be riding this one. Okay. <laughs> he's, he's just... Tutaj widzimy konia, który był kilkukrotnie adoptowany. Przyjmowali go, potem się okazało, że jednak ktoś nie może się nim zajmować. Wracał z powrotem do tego miejsca i z powrotem go ktoś adoptował. Po prostu stwierdzili, że on tu zostaje. To chyba jest jego po prostu miejsce i ma tutaj pobyt do żywotni. And he's just going to be one of our great lesson horses. You'll get to ride him when you come visit. Okay. I'll show you this. Feeding process is very Whoa. intense. Następnie została nam pokazana paszarnia. We have 200 horses here. Whoa. 200. 200. Every horse, every field has its own color code. No i oczywiście każdy koń ma swoją dietę, suplementy i leki. To naprawdę niełatwa rzecz, dlatego stosują pewne ułatwienia w postaci specjalnych kolorów kocy, kolory wózków. Każdy koń ma swoje wiaderko ze zdjęciem i z instrukcją. Jest to bardzo ważne, ponieważ przy nawet najmniejszym błędzie może to zaszkodzić po prostu koniu. Każdy wózek również jest na inną sekcję całego tego terenu, całej stajni. Karmienie odbywa się dwa razy dziennie, rano i wieczorem. W dodatku wizyty weterynarza i kowala mają co tydzień. Kristina tutaj następnie pokazała nam główny korytarz, gdzie znajduje się specjalne miejsce dla weterynarza, jakby musiał zrobić jakiś szybki zabieg, jakby koniu się coś stało, się skaleczył, cokolwiek, co jest mega fajną opcją. Oraz jak widzimy, mają też myjkę. Take shower. Ooh. And so this is available like to anybody that comes out here. Ooh. So anybody who comes and boards here or has their horse here or comes out and volunteers or whatever, this is available to all of them. Ooh. So if they need to go someplace nice after being Very here, good. they can just come and we could not do what we do without our volunteers. Mm -hmm. our, our volunteers keep this place going and help us care for our animals in the most amazing way. Mm -hmm. So we try to do everything we can yeah, for yeah, our volunteers to make it rewarding for them. This is a pretty fair example. Hey Daisy. She's still been here just a little bit. She's still very thin. When she first got here, we couldn't touch her. Mm -hmm. and now she's very personable. This mare, she first came to us as a three-year-old. Was she two or three? She was two, I, I think. She could not walk, she couldn't stand. Ta klacz jest to w ogóle bardzo ciekawy przypadek. Ona była uzależniona od swojej matki, od urodzenia. Nie mogła chodzić ani nawet stać przez dwa lata swojego życia. Jej hodowcy po prostu tego nie przypilnowali, w ogóle się nią nie zajmowali. Po tym jak ona przyjechała tutaj, odizolowali ją od matki, żeby była samodzielna. Warto wspomnieć, że na tej klaczy wypróbowany został pewien produkt z Norwegii. Dzięki temu produktowi ten koń był w stanie wstać. I ja naprawdę jestem pod wrażeniem. Oni zaryzykowali i ten produkt na nią zadziałał. Starts training next week. Oh, wow. How about that? Hey, say hi, Maddie. Is... She has beautiful mane. Everything about this mare is yes. beautiful. She's sweet, she's kind, hi. she's fun. She's just a big sweetie. This is Valor. This is a world class horse. And he, we just adopted him out to one of my more advanced riding students. Come here, Bubby. Hey, put his door up because he likes to unplug his fan. Uh, he, uh -huh. he, uh, he's five years old. He unplugs his fan. He turns it off up there. Oh Very quick. This is a diva. Come here, Katie. Okay. Okay. One of the horses I told you that sometimes we get the exceptional horse given to us, donated to us as a special horse for us to have a big fundraiser over. Mm -hmm. Kate is one of those horses. She won um, half a million dollars on the racetrack. She's nine years old. Her breeder is in the 
Jockey Club Hall of Fame, and then he passed away recently. A lot of different breeders wanted to buy her for a high dollar and put her in their broodmare programs. Her owners, they wanted her to have a life, a full life and with love and a purpose, not just be in a broodmare band. So they contacted us and asked if she could come here, be trained. She is a direct line bred horse, top and bottom, off of the two horses secretariat in Man of War. Oh, yeah. So both, she has both horses, top and bottom, directly on her papers. Muszę dodać, że to było dla mnie naprawdę niesamowite przeżycie. Nie sądziłam, że w swoim życiu w ogóle zobaczę konia z takim rodowodem. She's had a lot of negative experiences that caused her to trigger to fight. Amy and I are working to her learn to and trust help her learn to trust people again. Fortunately, she has an adopter and she gets to go to her new home Sunday. Oh. Special horse. Special horse. Yeah. So this is Miracle. She is one of my client horses and she is a rain cow horse. She is a client horse. She's super friendly. She loves like all of the scritches. She says I'm it itchy all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Loves it. I've been doing reining and range versatility with her. <laughs> she loves attention. She was through a couple of trainers before me and they really kind of traumatized her. So in a way she's a rescue horse even though she's not. We are so excited about this horse. This horse is Admiral. Come here, buddy. For the last four months we have been fighting night and day oh. to save his life. I think we're there. Yeah. He went out for his first hand walk today and he's oh. eating like that. Yeah, this is huge. What happened to him that uh, you fight for, for his life? There, but there's a disease in horses called EPM. EPM? Yes, which attacks the central nervous system, the spinal column and the brain. And it's awful. A lot of times it plants itself and then you don't know it's there until a stressful situation triggers its activity. We had a big gala festival and with all the excitement and the planning and the construction and the noise and the chaos, he went down, he got sick. And he got sicker and sicker and sicker and then suddenly he was unstable on his feet and then he was, I mean, it got bad. It got to the point where our, our vet's amazing. She's just night and day slugged it out with us to save him. And we've, we've spent nights in the stall with him. He has a per, a vol, one particular volunteer named Jennifer just loves this horse. He has just been with him through all of this. This is a big horse and he's been so unsteady on his feet that the only people that have been allowed in here are Amy and I. And, and he could not eat. He was to the point he couldn't control his mouth or swallow. So Amy and I were having to pull us and force food. So today she got to call him and take him outside for his first walk and it it's, we all Amazing. cry. Yeah, we all cry. And he was so happy. Yes, yes. So go this way. We have little horse shows here, do stuff, fun stuff here. It's been beautiful because we've had the big blue full moon yeah. and it's just been amazing riding out here. Just mm -hmm. incredible. Yeah. So, and you're going to ride out here. A lot of the clinicians, a lot of the show circuits are all about people, kids and adults winning things. Like money. winning money or winning buckles yeah, yeah. or wi winning stuff. And Amy and I are about horsemanship and learning to communicate with your horse. So we're going to do a whole series and fun show series on having fun with your horse mm -hmm. <laughs> and learning how to interact with your horse, be safe with your horse, communicate better with yeah, your this horse. This is the most important thing. Yes, and yes. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. People of all ages, even you know, grandparents, come on. It's just going to be fun stuff. Silly things like run with your horse to the end of the arena and bob for apples, both of you. You know, just just oh, just so fun, cool. just fun stuff. And then both you and your horse eat your apples. Who can eat the fastest? <laughs> So this is our newest building. We are so excited about this. I know what it is, but I don't know English word. Round, Round pin. pin. Round oh, pin. You know how it's called in uh, Polish? It's rozprężalnia. Are you sure about that? Will you say it one more time? Rozprężalnia. Rozprężalnia. Dobra, wiem, wiem. Przepraszam was za ten okropny błąd. Miałam laga mózgu, byłam zestresowana i nie ogarnęła mnie w ogóle z jegi, wyskoczył mi z tym i ja po prostu, ja nie wiem. Szukałam w głowie słowa lążownik, ale w ogóle zapomniałam, że ono istnieje i nie ogarnęłam. Rozprężania jest to miejsce, gdzie się rozprężasz przed zawodami. Lążownik jest to miejsce, które zostało nam pokazane. Naprawdę przepraszam i Christine i Amy za ten błąd. Mam nadzieję, że nam wybaczą i wy mi wybaczycie widzowie za ten głupi błąd. Życzę miłego oglądania dalej.
Jezus, naprawdę was bardzo za to przepraszam. Rozprężalnia. What we needed, because between our, our our therapy that we do is confidential. So mm -hmm. when we do therapy sessions with people, it has to be private and not a whole bunch of other people in there. Yeah, yeah. And that's very difficult. We are a busy barn. We have lots of horses, lots of things happening. So he said to us, "What do we need?" And we were talking, and we were like, "Well, we'd love to have some kind of round pen, that, you know, that could help us with our training, but it would also give us a private, confidential place yeah. to do." do therapy, it would also be a great place just privately to get away and show horses for adoption so it's not chaos in here. He's like, okay. And he built this horse. So amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. It's Wait till you see the inside. So Amy's right there over supervising the entire indoor everything, mm -hmm. the long hauls and the indoor. Yeah, yeah. Feed room's right here, so I'm right here. So both of us are just going to be... No i zaprowadzono nas do środka. Nigdy nie byłam w takim mega dużym lążowniku. W ogóle nigdy nie byłam w lążowniku, tak szczerze. Po prostu on był cudowny i robił wielkie wrażenie. Rozprężalnia, co nie? Tak, <śmiech> niezła rozprężalnia. <śmiech> Boże, flater, ty kamoniu. Na lążowniku był również wiatrak oraz każdy z tych bramek, które widzicie, ten segment, z którego składają się te ściany, się otwierały, dzięki czemu możesz wyjść z każdego kąta tego miejsca, więc to wow, to było naprawdę mega przydatne. This is dream place for the all horse lovers. Yes. 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 Anyway, eventually we'll clean this up. So we'll make this a green space and we'll put tables out here and mm -hmm. this will be pleasant. We just haven't, that's to be done. I'm moving here. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome yeah. to. Come on. Really just a little touch screen with a button. Oh wow. So, change the speed and then it's just off. off. Oh. And that's the future. <laughs> Następnie poszliśmy na padoki, gdzie przebywały konie na emeryturze. I to nie były zwykłe starsze konie, bo każdy z nich był co najmniej po trzydziestce. Abacus was the lead horse in a therapeutic riding program up around St. Louis, Missouri. At 20, they called us and they were going to euthanize him because he had lost his his teeth had worn down mm -hmm. couldn't eat hay and he was so big it was costing them too much money in grain mm -hmm. and they just and no one would take him and and it's just Connie our wonderful Connie was horrified and said you will not put that horse down you get him here and they were like we don't have a trailer big enough for him so we went and picked him up <laughs> and he's been with us since so for 14 years he's 25 pounds a day so he eats a full bag of grain twice uh, every two days and he is one of our best Horses. He's our mascot. He does all of our events with us. He gives pony rides. He's Santa kissed at Christmas. He, and he has no teeth. And oh. we don't care at all. He has a couple front ones, and that's it. Oh my god. <laughs> He's so small. Yeah, yeah, little Stella. <laughs> this is little Stella. And see her shoulders? Oh, yeah. She's oh. a mini. Both of her shoulders are like that. This is Jag. Mm. Jag is going to put himself in the middle of everything. Yeah. Like. And say, take a picture of me, pet me. Stella is an example of what happens to a lot of minis. People get drunk and they're like, oh, let's go get on the mini. And blew out their shoulders. So her shoulders are destroyed. They can never be repaired. This is Jag. He is, um, he is Mr. Popular. He dresses up at Halloween. And he's 36. Here, you need to meet Jesse. And then I guess we can go get you on horse. Jesse! He's okay. one of our... Signature horses. Okay. But you'll meet him. Come here, Jess! Come here! I'll bring him over. You don't have to okay. look out here. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Very nice dog. How is she called? Miniature Australian Shepherd. Uh, what is her name? Sapphire. Sapphire. Oh. We call her Sassy Pants. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's a shepherd, yeah? An Australian Shepherd. Australian so shepherd. she's a cow dog. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mustang off of uh, New Mexico. He's a Bureau of Land Management, Wild Mustang. 
wszystkie te konie tu na podoku po prostu żyją swoją emeryturą. Nie muszą nic robić, nie muszą pracować. A teraz idziemy na padoki, gdzie przebywają konie, które są całkiem ślepe. For the rest of his life and we said of course mm -hmm. so he's here aladdin this really pretty sorrel he came to us at two he and a great big we have a big belgian mare who's only four now she came to us she was two on the trailer he was one she had a they were in a trailer accident mm -hmm. and her back was broken and he mm -hmm. he had a head injury and detached his corneas mm -hmm. and so he was blind her he back was broken jasmine? yeah i didn't know that's that. how he was aladdin she was jasmine oh mm -hmm. Podczas naszego prowadzenia akurat przyjechała jedna z głównych założycielek tego miejsca. Bartek. So we have foster parents too. So you want me to turn my car? On? Sure. <laughs> yeah, good idea. People that adopt horses and take them, but we also have horses that maybe can never be ridden or can never, for whatever reason, they may have limitations or but they're still wonderful, beautiful companions. And those go into foster homes. Uh -huh. and, and I have the ones that aren't adoptable that have something wrong with them. And so they stay at my house because no one needs to see them to adopt them and so I've had them there for many years and different ones come and go if some can be adopted then they are mm -hmm. but the rest are part of my family I have three of my own and I live just right back there you're gonna we'll mm -hmm. drive right by our yeah, house yeah go right by my house we, we call this the island yes. it's like we once you come and get involved we sort of yeah. all yeah. Are kind of moving and living right <laughs> it's here it's like in the mm -hmm. video game <laughs> community and it's what I dreamed of as a little girl mm -hmm. that I look out my window and see horses and now wherever I go from my house to driving down the road there's horses, horses everywhere, everywhere. Mm -hmm. and it's just wonderful and it's the dream. people here are mm -hmm. wonderful too. Yeah. makes me believe in dream you know? yes mm -hmm. yeah. dreams exactly. can come true also our trip through row 66 mm -hmm. was our dream it's they're doing it right now. Doing yeah. now yeah, yeah. Yes. it's a shame Connie's not here because she's one of a kind mm -hmm. her personality is just unbelievable her love for horses and all that she's done all animals, for all animals. Just yes i'm taking care yeah. of did you see auto up there? no they haven't met auto I okay haven't. i take care of auto since connie's not on the premises full time anymore and he's a three-legged cow and before that she had a three-legged goat mm -hmm. <laughs> came in the house yeah <laughs> yep. i went everywhere with her drove in the yep. car yeah the yep. bank i mean everywhere with yep. her so Priscilla. it doesn't matter if if there's something that's can't be no one can adopt or take connie will take it in She used to rescue dogs too. Oh, and her house is spotless. You, yes, you hear yes. 13 dogs and you go, oh, no, she no. took good care of them. Spotless. And everything was clean. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing to me. I have three cats and I chase them. <laughs> <laughs> all those buckets you saw, all the horses we feed, she comes in and fills all those buckets after the mm -hmm. feeding. Yeah, and there's different supplements, different mm -hmm. grain for different horses, which mm -hmm. these two evaluate the horses and make sure they're getting the right. And, and as a result, we have horses that live to 40. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was really nice to meet oh, you. Can I hug you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I can I hug you too? Yeah. Oh, so nice to meet you. I'm glad. I hope you have a wonderful trip the rest of the way. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Christina zaczęła nam opowiadać o historii wcześniej już wspomnianej krówki. It was Christmas because it was just me, Ken and Connie here, and it was bitter cold, and it was night before Christmas. 
literally. I live right there in the top of the building and Ken and Connie were still living in the house. The phone rang and Connie called and she's like, can you come and meet us? These kids are gonna show up and they have this rare exotic calf whose feet are frozen. This man was breeding these exotics, dwarf exotics, and I'm not sure what the kind of breed is exactly, but he was using them to sell clandestinely to some um, oriental restaurants for some delicacies mm -hmm. that were not legal in this country. They were um, trying to arrest him. He fled the country and the herd was abandoned. And we had all this terrible, brutal weather. It was like 10 below zero. It was horrible weather. They got most of the herd out, but this little calf, they didn't see it. And it was left out there overnight. And when it was found the next day, it's lower limbs had all completely been frozen. Kids found it, I'm calling them kids, but they were young adults. Mm -hmm. And so they took it, tried to help it, called us, and by the time they got it to us, it was midnight of Christmas Eve. And so we, Connie said, of course we'll take it. That's Otto's story. He's grown and grown, and he's a little bit unfriendly right now because he got castrated last week. Oh. <laughs> now that he's got most of his height and growth, he has, we've ordered prosthetic limbs for his back legs. And as soon as they come in and get fitted, he's going to live in a special exotic sanctuary. They're from, they're from Poland. Poland. Yeah, people are from Poland. Yeah, Bartek. 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 Hello. Hi, I'm Trish. It's nice oh, to meet you. Hello. So they're here and they are doing... Mom is Polish. Oh, ah, okay. Mom can speak it, I cannot. Oh, okay. She could read it, she'd write to the family, she read the letters. So she was Polish, dad was Swedish, made me dumb blonde and came. We just uh, learned them... Um, the words for... Um, round the, pin. Round on the round pin. pin. It's, uh, it's a rozprężalnia. Of course it is. <laughs> no, jak wiemy jednak nie. Spotkaliśmy również mieszkającego tam kotka. He's 21. What? Every animal in this place is very well aged. Like... If you listen to his meow, it sounds like... <laughs> Like, oh, I like you. Yeah. <laughs> Every animal is welcome here. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Następnie wróciliśmy do stajni. She's 30. She had an intestinal blockage that was surgical. Was this two weeks ago now? Yeah. yeah. She's not a surgical candidate. At 30, she will not wake up from anesthesia. So the options were to euthanize her. And we said to our vet, is there any chance we can help her? And the vet said, well, there's one chance out of 100 that you mm -hmm. can get her, we can get her through this. And we said, well, we, we feel like we should try that for her. So Amy and I literally spent day and night. We were taking turns staying up the all through the night with her because she had to have certain types of treatments. Literally, she's here today and she's completely unblocked we got her through it and she yeah. has actually gained quite a lot of weight and all the <laughs> normal safa is a beautiful arabian a more... this is just the result of two weeks of a nightmare and not being able to eat at all Basti was um is a really fancy fancy show horse or was and he was in a horrible trailering accident it, you can see by his legs he was mm -hmm. cut to bits oh. they didn't think he could be saved and his owner didn't think he could pay for the expenses. Can you show him all your tricks? He is the best lesson horse. He's an upper level horse. He's he's just he's just awesome. Maybe you say how to spot. 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 <laughs> Polish uh, spot is Kropka. 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 <laughs> you walk away from him, he's going to climb all the way up here. He's going to put his feet all mm -hmm. the way up and stand on the top and go like this to us. Like, now come back here. Okay, let's get you a helmet and let's get you riding. Więc ja poszłam z Amy dopasować kask i zaraz odbędę swoją pierwszą w życiu jazdę konną w stylu western. A tutaj jest Roni, na którym będę jeździć. A lot of cantors. To jest koń, którego zapomniałam imienia, ale pewnie na filmie jest, ale będę na nim dzisiaj jeździć masterowo po raz pierwszy, więc będzie jazda. Jest GoPro, mam nadzieję, że coś tam się uda. Piszcie widzę w komentarzach, czy kiedyś jeździliście w stylu westernowym. Piszcie koniecznie. Jestem ciekawa, czy ktoś z nowych widzów jeździł westernowo. 
Cristina wzięła najpierw konia na lążę, żeby się przyzwyczaił do otoczenia i żeby nic dziwnego go nie zaskoczyło podczas jazdy później. Poprawanie sprzętu, poprawianie strzemion. No ja generalnie jeździłam w siodle westernowym kilka razy w Polsce, ale tylko w terenie. No i na zasadach, wiecie, angielskiego jeździectwa. Nie robiłam nic inaczej niż jak normalnie, więc Amy zaczęła mi mówić podstawowe rzeczy, które się używa w westernie. Generalnie wodze się trzyma w ten sam sposób. Można je trzymać obrącz lub jedną ręką. No i generalnie trzeba pamiętać, że to jest koń westernowy i tutaj nie ma tego kontaktu. Cały ten kontakt już znaczy dla niego bardzo, bardzo dużo. There you go. Perfect. Christina dodatkowo mi dodała, że bym nie zaciągała się za bardzo za tym koniu, bo on jest bardzo lekki na pysku, no a wiecie jak to jest z końmi do przodu i się im wisi na pysku. Więc jeśli chodzi o skręcanie, to mniej więcej działa to tak samo. Oczywiście zewnętrzna łetka do popychania konia bardziej. Ciężar ciała. Tu troszeczkę popróbowałam sobie, żeby go troszkę wyczuć. Troszeczkę w prawo, troszeczkę w lewo. Tutaj Krystyna jeszcze mnie prowadzi. Tutaj już jestem sama właśnie na nim. Dali mi się teraz wydaje na tym nagraniu, że chyba troszeczkę miałam za bliski ten kontakt. No i generalnie ważne to było, żeby moje biodra, jeśli chcę zwolnić tego konia, też je opuścić. Generalnie tak bardziej usiąść w siodło niż już siedzę. To może jest trudne do zrozumienia teraz, ale pewnie koniarze niektórzy mnie zrozumieją, bo to też w angielskim stylu czasem działa. Im bardziej sobie wygodniej i uspokojniej sobie usiądziesz, tym wolniej koń będzie szedł. Tutaj zostałam poproszona o troszeczkę przyspieszenia konia, żeby poszedł sobie troszeczkę szybciej. Też Amy mi mówi, że na początku ona też swoim studentom każe, znaczy student swoim uczniom, każe po prostu wyczuć tego konia, czyli zwalniać, przyspieszać, zwalniać, przyspieszać. Tutaj on mi się zatrzymał i to nie była moja decyzja, nie wiem, on po prostu sam zdecydował, że się zatrzymał, się sama zdziwiłam, o co mu chodzi, ale nawet koń żaden przy nim nie stał. Coś mu nie pasowało to miejsce, ale to zobaczycie później. O, oczywiście standardowo potknięcie, jak typowy koń. Turn that outside toe out and let it push him around in a very, very small circle. Teraz tutaj zostałam poproszona właśnie, żeby go skierować po prostu na koło, tylko że bardzo, bardzo małe koło, żeby zrobić ten taki, wiecie, typowy spin. Ten koń musi skrzyżować te nogi. Amy mi tutaj pomaga, żeby mi się udało. Ja do końca nie wiem, co robię. Skrzyżował troszeczkę właśnie, o, widzicie, skrzyżował teraz tutaj, o, 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 zrobił trochę tu, jak widzicie. No i trochę mi to wychodziło, trochę nie, ale ten koń też podobno był jakby nie w formie. No i teraz próbuję dokładnie to samo, tylko w drugim kierunku. No i ja chyba, o, o, troszeczkę... Ja chyba trochę nie wiedziałam wtedy, co mam zrobić, bo generalnie chyba nie rozumiałam, że my robimy teraz już ten spin. <śmiech> O, ale tu o wizie zrobił o. No ja generalnie tutaj robię tylko kółeczka, więc to takie... Nie chciałam go tu szarpać, bałam się go ciągnąć za bardzo za te wodze, bo wiadomo, że on nie może mieć tego kontaktu. W ogóle patrzcie, jak on tutaj fajnie stoi, tak jak taki typowy western koń, ma grubaśny, jest fajny. No i dostałam właśnie radę, że jeśli cokolwiek poczuję, że on leci mi do przodu, ucieka, to po prostu mam się zrelaksować, tak? No generalnie typowa rada, też w jeździectwie takim ogólnym, bardzo przydatna, polecam. Yes. No i się zaczęło. Dostałam pochwałę i to nie była moja decyzja. Nie panikowałam, starałam się zachować spokój, jak widzicie. Tutaj yy, Ziggy nie nagrał wcześniej. Uczę się typowego zatrzymania po prostu, czyli usiądnięcie bardzo mocno w siodle i popchnięcie dosłownie strzemion do przodu. No i drugim ćwiczeniem, znaczy drugą częścią tego ćwiczenia było to, żeby wycofać kilka kroków. Amy mi później mówiła, że to jest początkowe ćwiczenie, które prowadzi później do tego takiego ślizgu z głęstarnowego, wiecie. No i oczywiście, jak słyszeliście, mówiłam wow, żeby on stał. Bo on po prostu na słowo wow faktycznie stał. O, i jak widzicie, znowu jego ulubione miejsce. Ja próbuję go zatrzymać, ale boję się go zaciągnąć. Ale tu akurat z tym razem to była mucha i Krystyna już idzie zabić tą głupią muchę, która gryzła mu tyłek. No i zatrzymamy go wow, 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 tak, bo też mu troszeczkę odpierniczało. O, a tutaj on lubił się zatrzymać. That's part of his 
No i generalnie zaraz podejmę próbę zrobienia ustępowania od łydki, bo ustępowanie od łydki też się okazało, że występuje. Akurat Ziggy nie nagrał tego, jak to robię. Znaczy ja to próbowałam robić akurat na tym koniu, ale tak powiem wam szczerze, że mi to nie za bardzo wychodziło. Generalnie to było takie dziwne doświadczenie, bo ja niby wiem, jak jeździć konno, ale ja wiedziałam, że on nie działa na wszystkie moje pomocy, które ja znam, nie zadziała dobrze. I to było naprawdę dziwne, bo czułam się strasznie niepewnie. Momentami pewnie, momentami niepewnie. Było takie, kurczę, czy na pewno dobrze usłyszałam, czy na pewno o to chodzi, więc to było strasznie dziwne doświadczenie, jakbym dosłownie uczyła się jeździć konno trochę na nowo. Or a lot of bit. Yeah, a lot of bit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is your first Western ride. You're doing incredible. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And he's loving this. He's like, yes, finally. They got me out of that room. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we're happy to have you. Yes. And we are very serious when we invite you to come back. Mm -hmm. Please do. Please, please do. Come back. Stay. Plan on a vacation. Stay for a week. Bardzo podziękowaliśmy, naprawdę czułam się tam przecudownie. No i tak się zakończyła moja w sumie jazda westernu. Naprawdę mam nadzieję, że kiedyś tam będziemy mogli wrócić i naprawdę przyjechać na tydzień. Po prostu to było cudowne miejsce, do którego naprawdę bardzo, bardzo bym chciała wrócić. No i ja już tutaj właśnie zaraz będę się z wami żegnać. To to było na tyle, dziękujemy wam bardzo za oglądanie. Oczywiście wszyscy tu są mile widziani i wpadajcie na stronę internetową, gdzie możecie właśnie dać donacje i ja wam oczywiście przesłałam gorące pozdrowienia. Bye! <grywa>